So what is actually the story behind the Apple acquisition? We had launched a free app in the App Store, February 4th, 2010. People started to love it and write about it and tweet about it. My favorite tweet was someone said, it's like someone came from the future and said, here, you've got to try this app. Because remember, at the time, there wasn't anything that felt like Siri. There was no mass market, broad consumer way where you could interact conversationally across a broad set of domains. So we launched, and about two weeks later, our CEO, Doug, gets a phone call on his iPhone. It says, Apple, Cupertino. He's like, oh, Apple's calling. And I'm gathering around, answer, answer. And then we hear this voice. Hey, it's Steve. What you doing? Want to come over to my house tomorrow? True story. Wow. And we're like, Steve Jobs, you're calling us? How'd you get this number? Because one thing people don't know, Siri means secret in Swahili. And we started out as stealthcompany.com. So we had no website, no phone number, no address. And yet Steve Jobs was somehow miraculously calling us directly, inviting us to his house. So we went, we went to his house, the three co-founders. We spent about three and a half hours at his ranch in Palo Alto. We talked about the future and technology. And by the end of the meeting, he said, I want to buy your company. And we said, thank you. We're flattered, not interested, goodbye. And we left. So the original intent, even though we were building for the world where Apple competitors were going to need technology that could surpass the iPhone. We actually were not focused on acquisition or interested in acquisition. We thought we could do it ourselves. We had signed a mobile distribution deal that was going to place our technology on tens to hundreds of millions of phones of all sorts, Android, Blackberry, everything. And major distribution deal was coming out with primetime TV ads, so that was the route that we were taking. And when Steve came, you know, it was flattering. We thought Apple was the best user interface company in the world, but it wasn't in our plan to sell at that point. But Steve and Scott Forstall came back about a month later. They made a more compelling argument that they understood the vision. I was very suspect that Apple or a big company would just try to make this a little feature into their device. And I had a vision that this should be as important as the web as important as the mobile app store. That's what Siri was meant to be. And Steve convinced me he understood it and he promised he would support it, which I think he did as best he could until Siri launched October 4th, 2011. Steve Jobs died the very next day on October 5th. So he did his best to support the full vision up to that point, to put Siri on every device, to open it up to the ecosystem of third-party developers, much like the iPhone came out. It set a standard for what interaction should feel like. Then they opened it up to the App Store. So every developer in the world, millions of developers could contribute and make money. That was my original vision for Siri. Steve understood that. Unfortunately, after he passed, other people followed who didn't share quite the same vision.